Kemper profiler tones and talks. This is going to be a special uh, challenge for us. Hi, Thomas. Ah, you're up for Hi, the Tom. challenge. <laughs> okay, uh, we are in Let Me Throw That Concept at You season <laughs> um, episode. I think we're in 24. And this time we discussed that it might be helpful for you guys out there, um, you guys, that we have a look at the possibilities of, uh, you know, uh, controlling the profiler with... MIDI, like running your show from, you know, a backing track player uh, along with the MIDI control of uh, controlling the lights, controlling your synthesizers, controlling your whoever, and also controlling the switching of the profiler. And we have been looking into this and uh, came out with uh, some um, uh, realizations and uh, both Thomas and I uh, built a little simple thing that shows how this can be done and how it works. Um, how was it for you? I mean, I saw you a couple of years ago already at Guitar Summit and uh, you were playing uh, to a song, a backing track where everything was controlled, even the wah-wahs and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So that was five years ago. Has it changed? Mm, I, th I think it's uh, much more simpler. So... Um, <clears throat> First of all, USB MIDI. So you don't need to have an, uh, a special uh, MIDI interface, the five uh, pin interface stuff. So um, normally you uh, connect when you're recording um, the profiler uh, via USB to the computer. So this is also usable for MIDI. And uh, <clears throat> that was my attempt to to do this just to have a little bit more freedom while recording if you want to do some switching stuff and some uh, may, yeah some volume fade so it's not only for those guys who are playing with um, loops or, or with backing tracks from logic or whatever and then switch on off effects and something else um, you can use that too for recording yes of course uh, no no doubt about that but uh, I've been thinking about uh, <clears throat> doing some stuff with uh, the backing tracks and not doing everything live uh, especially we had this a uh, number of times you know to switch or not to switch uh, mm -hmm. if you do it all with the guitar or um, deal with uh, Oh, I'm singing and oh, I need to switch, yeah. whatever. Uh, and if you have, uh, you know, somebody, something in the background take care of all of this, totally. that might be a huge um, mm. additional grade of freedom. But of course, it's a, um, a potential source of um, big trouble. Once you miss a beat, uh, then, you know, everything's uh, going crazy and i know from um visiting a lot of people on stages uh, especially on bigger stages that they have usually uh, the option to do both so they have yeah. their <clears> stuff <throat> controlled from uh, a main main track main clock plus they have their remotes uh, uh, with them um, at the front of the stage where they can also do the switching and that is a good thing with uh, yeah. i don't know how this is with other devices with a profiler that um you know, the remote control always overrides what's coming from yeah. MIDI. And then, of course, you can run multiple devices. And um, I mean, if you guys have seen the Rammstein rig, um, check it out on the Camper website, the interview with uh, Lutz Buch. Uh, they are having, uh, you know, a huge setup. And they're doing the same. Uh, uh, there's some switching done by from uh, the guitar den, the tech area, and... Uh, Richard on the front and so this all should be then pretty safe yeah I mean maybe let's just dive in immediately or are there some uh, general things you would like to address before we mm. get into some practical stuff no let's go to the practical stuff so okay uh, because every I, theoretical things uh, can be made with the practical stuff yeah because uh, when I looked at this because I realized okay now there's also USB to MIDI and uh, 
I don't know, you, you have the player or your profiler and you just have your USB cable connected to your laptop and you're done. You can do all this and you don't need extra stuff and um, yeah. anywhere you can fix and fine tune your uh, performances then. So I thought, how does it work? And I got stuck immediately when I tried to find out. And that's because I am losing losing yeah i am using <laughs> logic and uh, the midi handling of external sources has changed a little bit mm. um, from one version to the current one and so let's just uh, jump over to my other screen where i prepared logic and the rig manager i hope you see that i have the rig manager for you mm. and come on and here's logic and you can see i have uh, just put in a stereo playback here and here i created some tracks for um, the switching you can do this all on one track i just tried to for the transparency here and while i was going and learning so to say <laughs> um, i just wanted to have some um, possibility of um, separate that for myself and to show you guys because how do you get this going, the MIDI via USB with a profiler? Well, you just create a new track and it should be a MIDI track, of course, mm. doing external MIDI. And then you do that, create that track and then uh, let's move it down here. And then uh, these parameters here in the inspector have changed a little bit. So you should, uh, that's how I started. The MIDI in mm -hmm. uh, connection is the profiler, but um, that doesn't work. Uh, that's not uh, what you need to do at all because also it says just MIDI in and you want to go to a MIDI out. So to get this going, you have to do this. Here is this external device like a insert in a slot and then if you click that you get this one that's the external instrument and then you say this track should have a MIDI destination profiler and then it says channel you can specify the channel I just used all on channel one and that's mm -hmm. basically it <laughs> so here with the things I did uh, you see I just use do all on channel one. So that was what I had to do um, to get this going. And I had to ask some logic friends who knew about that. Because <laughs> I, I never used um, external MIDI um, since, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's very interesting. I didn't use that. All right. Okay. So cool. we see later <laughs> what I did. Maybe. Okay. Maybe okay. Okay. Some other stuff. Okay. Right. So and then I needed to learn that uh, over here, this window, uh, you can open the uh, events list editor, mm -hmm. and to put in the switching information. Um, you have to, you know, create an event that would be something like this here. And um, you need to assign some parameters to this. But uh, let's come to this in, in a second. Because uh, the parameters which we need to know about and put in here are the MIDI commands, the control commands. And they I have, um, bear with me for the second. I prepared a folder where I find them immediately and immediately is uh, hopefully not a couple of minutes. Uh, here it is. No, damn it. Oh, podcast here. Switching episode. Camper MIDI data. So find this PDF here on the internets or on the Camper websites yeah mm -hmm. so it's, it's all also in the manual it's also on the manual but you find it as a separate um, mm -hmm. document as well so right. here you have the MIDI control change uh, parameter list 
And it's always good when you begin this, when you have an idea of what you would like to do. So what I like to do was to, um, <coughs> let's come back here for a moment, um, you know, to change distortion stuff, um, effects, um, mix levels, and um, a little bit of volume. And I used a simple track to do that. So um, to just quickly show you something, um, uh, we can have a look at the, um, come on, the. let's go to the screen again, uh, these parameters because volume we find here, that's expression, let's CC number seven, it's volume, that is mm -hmm. actually the volume that you control with your volume pedal, where you can say the location is, I think we can see this here, um, that's important to know, the location, I put this volume pedal to the output location, which means that if I do something with this parameter here, I control the volume pedal parameter. General is, output volume cutting, cutting the delay tails off if you go down. Yes, you, yeah. exactly. So that's the thing. <laughs> then I have um, delay mix level. That's controller 68. Mm -hmm. That's the one who makes sure that this guy here, this mm -hmm. um, is handled properly, the mix level. And then I found um, that expression pedal, the expression pedal parameter, which is not here, I see, I guess. Um, let me show here, this one. Um, that's what you uh, control with your expression pedal is the morphing. And mm -hmm. uh, that makes thing things quite simple because all this stuff here with morphing, mm -hmm. you can th then just control with this one parameter. So is this sort of um, very able to follow? I mean, you know how the process, but... Um, yes. Okay, so everybody out there, scream if you have questions. <laughs> we we will be happy to dive into this um, 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 soon. So um, now, how do you uh, create a uh, an event? So that's how I did it, and let's actually do something here. No, uh, for this fun, I just use that additional track because then I don't f up my prep prepared stuff so profiler yes so and so that's how i do it i create create an event so it's mm -hmm. here it's a part and um in there i say i want to insert a controller and i say plus and for example if i use controller that's from the list 17 then this is uh, a switch which would engage the first stomp mm -hmm. this one here and this is switched off as you can see because the number the value is zero zero is mm -hmm. off and anything else than zero for example one is on and I don't know if that has executed it as immediately. You need to, to play the yeah right so the song at the position. Right. So um, let me see if we can move it. So play. So here is the yeah sl a stomp and it didn't Turns work. On. Yeah. Did it turn on? Yeah. The pure booster. Yes. Okay. Okay, it's off. Come on, and there it now. is. And now here we are. Whoop, yeah, there, there it is. <laughs> so <laughs> you made it. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> pretty exciting. Yeah, and and pretty simple. So that's that's how you do it. And um, um, yeah. So you, yeah, then you can create here, for example, uh, um, your 
events and you can label your um, parameters, you know, a part which is called delay mix and you can then also grab it and move it around and mm, you can and see. Copy. Yes, and copy. And for example, here, um, when you have inserted this event, you can have uh, this uh, curve with logic as well. Mm. So you can even then uh, make easy, simple um, controller lanes if you want to move, you know, your mix in a creative way along with your backing track, for example. Mm -hmm. I think you have prepared something like this. Yeah, for I did us. some some stuff yeah, yeah. and uh, now i just quickly show you what i did for example um here is my morphing and um for the beginning of the track i made sure everything is set to zero which means uh the morphing let me bring this over here um is also to zero mm -hmm. and um i bring it up later a little bit if you see here, no. Uh, here we go. Here there's a morph yeah. up. Mm -hmm. And with this curve, you can also determine how much of the morphing um, yeah. is, is happening. Uh, this one was uh, switched off, so let's go a little bit further. Come on, here, for example. So um, here you see that uh, also the morphing was brought up to here, mm -hmm. which uh, allows you to, you know, just if you would use it in real time. Um, yeah, to, to, to make some fades. Right. So uh, for me, let's just the morphing controls this booster, the level that goes mm -hmm. into the amplifier and mm -hmm. also here um, the, uh, yeah. you know, uh, special equalizer stuff. Yeah, yeah some special stuff so when the uh, distortion hits uh, then less treble and stuff like that so the simple stuff and it's my usual rig I'm using here yeah that's basically it and um, let's maybe switch over to Thomas uh, what he did and after that um, I can quickly show you how uh, this affects uh, the profiler parameter while I'm playing uh, to this uh, simple playback mm -hmm. here. Would Great. you agree? Yes, I can Just, do. We okay. need to uh, tell everybody some important stuff. If you are using um, the profiler controlled by a DAW, um, there are some settings in the system menu and there is one setting which is called UI to MIDI. Um, turn mm -hmm. that off because it can create, if you have a lot of uh, stuff going on, I had that yesterday, then uh, that it creates a loop and then the buffer, I think it's, it's some buffer size which is overloaded and then uh, nothing happens anymore and there's a nice screen coming up at the profiler which says please call <laughs> call the emergency <laughs> i had that yesterday so uh but you told me turn turn that off and everything is fine and uh it was that way yeah so and on, and on the other hand uh the ui to midi is uh if you switch it on uh you can use it to record yeah uh um your midi events and your performance into you know a midi track on your daw but uh then just don't use it as is afterwards uh, have a look and go through it because uh usually um or the the potential is there that um, you record a lot of um, data noise also yeah. um, that you have to clean up a little bit to make sure that the profile Pilot that just sees some very defined um, switching commands and not too many commands at the same time because that's what you can do. You can send, I don't know, 10 commands at the same time. And um, mm. what would you do if uh, 10 people tell you to do something completely different uh, in just one second? You wouldn't know what to do. So mm. 
that's what the profiler does. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, but enough of that. Show us what you did and uh, how uh, you create the yeah, I have a, connection to the media and stuff. A slightly different approach. Um, maybe it's, um, yeah. I I just uh, was was lucky to to get the goal, <laughs> to make the first goal. That's what it's about. Um, That's what um, it's about. Yeah, I will show you. So my attempt was to record a song, um, intro and second part, A and B part. The intro I will I will show you the rig manager first. So here's the rig compressor. Um, clean sound, crystal delay, and natural reverb. So this is the sound for the intro. Um, I wanted to have um, for the intro some volume swells. Now I'm doing this with the volume knob on the guitar, but I want to have that uh, created by MIDI from the profiler. Next thing is when I switch to the B section, the gain should be raised up, so morphed to another level. And the crystal delay should be turned off without spillover to get this sound. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is really um, not nice if you need to do this all at once. So making volume swells with um, wait a minute, making volume swells with your foot pedal, then doing some morphing stuff while you do volume swells or beside that. Um, I was doing that with um, the um, knob with a morphing with a switching knob so set the knob at uh no setting setting the time for the morphing to to go to the morph sound at four bars so i just hit one knob after four bars then play another four bars and the morphing is then ended when when i'm going to the b section mm -hmm. And um, yeah, then switching crystal delay off at that time. So this is sometimes, yeah, it's stress to do that all the time. Um, you can do that, but it's easier to do it not and let somebody else do that. So um, what I did in Logic was that one. Um, here we are. I also created a track which I called Profiler MIDI, but I didn't do this external stuff. I don't know why. I just uh, set MIDI import profiler. Okay. Then MIDI in channel one, MIDI out channel one, mm -hmm. and it worked. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Magic, Man. magic. It's uh, maybe because I'm uh, in Bavaria here <laughs> and they have said it. <laughs> yes, that's, you know, that's, that's, maybe. that's, that's where, where yeah. everything is straightened out. And uh, yeah, um, Bavaria yeah. is uh, the north of Bavaria. So you everything works fine here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I did that all in one MIDI track. Here is the MIDI track. So I did the same way. So creating external MIDI mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, have that track here. Mm -hmm. Then when I double click it, I get this piano roll. Mm -hmm. And um, oh, I would show you the stuff when I'm doing the other. So here is instrument five, <clears throat> um, MIDI profiler, channel one, and channel one. So I also created a new track, MIDI region, mm -hmm. then double click it, and then 
searching for these MIDI commands. So the first command would be the MIDI volume, and this is control number seven. I have that here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, for example, to create my volume swells, I double click or I click here. Having bar four is the count in for my track. So I'm starting at bar five, creating this volume swell to, yeah, let's say 116 and being on top at the uh, third 16th note after the bar, so swelling in and having the one at zero, zero here. Mm -hmm. So this creates this volume swell, very easy. And then the next thing is delay module off with uh, no spillover is the number 26, so control 26. Now there's nothing. And I want to have that at bar 13 when the B section comes. So, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Should be a little bit longer. Bar 13, going to bar 13. And then switching somewhere. Um, it's on, so that means everything above one hundred uh, above one and then switching off to zero so that's it and then uh, the next one would be uh, this morph button function which is controller number 80 so going the to the button okay that's this uh, is the button that's it's, that's that's, that's, that's <laughs> a, an important uh, distinction to, to be honest to be yeah. honest mm -hmm. um i didn't find <laughs> this morph <laughs> volume i i just looked to the to the sec to the switching sections so and then i just saw oh morph morph button fine that's what i want uh setting everything on four bars and then switching on so this is very easy so uh wait a minute i take you to the rig manager there's something that you need to know so um if you do this uh, cc number 80 switching option you should set this is uh set the tempo 130 beats per minute this is my song tempo Mm -hmm. Then race time for four bars. So that means four bars before um, the morph sound should be um, reached. Mm -hmm. Then um, you should start this point mm -hmm. with the MIDI section. And then fall time at zero so that it's immediately turns down. And you need to do that. Uh, turn on the momentary switch just for this MIDI stuff. Hmm. And um, yeah, I can show you how it looks like then in <clears throat> my MIDI arrangement, logic arrangement. So this is um, the other one. Turning that off so the profiler doesn't get irritated by too much different uh, MIDI commands. So we have um, control number 26, and then this is the, yeah, the morphing stuff. So it's That's going from zero to 100. I've mm -hmm. just did 127. It's uh, totally equal. You can do another thing it starts morphing starts at bar nine ends at 13 then here we have our morph sound done and uh, this is set by the profiler's rise time of four mm -hmm. bars mm -hmm. okay so that's the switch right you you hit the switch yeah. and then it takes four bars to uh yes. reach uh, the the maximum value of the yeah. morphing 
it's like like doing I, I just thought about that uh, mm -hmm. thought about doing the pedal stuff but I found this switching option and that was in mind too so uh, I couldn't do volume swells and more yeah we, you can do that with left and right foot but um, not me <laughs> <laughs> yeah well I haven't seen yet um, a, a guitar playing person uh, standing on two Pedals yeah, standing, and do, doing, Especially, doing, yeah. doing this thing. Haven't seen so far. Uh, I don't know how long the pa the pedals would take a uh, full weight of uh, of someone. Yeah. Um, which brings me to a very important point. Um, some of the camper support guys told me um, a lot of people don't realize that there is now MIDI going on with your profiler if you use the USB connection, mm. because if by some, I don't know, incident, uh, it's a coincidence that your DAW is doing something on that channel, which is uh, undefined or so, and there's some MIDI stuff trickling over uh, to the profiler, which you haven't assigned and you, you, you haven't taken care about, uh, then that might, of course, irritate the profiler, as it would any other device as well. Mm. So make sure if you haven't realized that yet, and if you're working with the DAW and if you're sending MIDI out to external devices, make sure that uh, nothing is sent to uh, the profiler uh, mm. device and channel to make sure that your profile is not uh, yeah. irritated. That's, uh, that's a very important thing. And another important thing at this point, I think, is um, when you're using the volume or uh, the pedal volume automation, which is called MIDI volume in the DAWs, mm. um, make sure that the settings for the volume pedal in the profiler are correct as well. Because only if um, the parameter is, let me show, show this uh, yeah. for a second, um, that this parameter is at, uh, you find it in the rig menu here, um, at minus five, then uh, it would work correctly because when the range is set to minus five, uh, you will have the full range of MIDI volume from zero to 127 from here to here, which would be um, the max that uh, your profiler is set to. If you set, for example, your master output to minus six, uh, then uh, if you run MIDI volume to the max, then you're here. Do you, uh, uh, I don't uh, see the screen now. Oh, the sorry. Screen. oh yeah, yeah. Good, good. <laughs> uh, nah, zoom. Bear with me. Ah, so, so people great. again. Yeah. Um, maybe I cut it here. Um, um, it works uh, if the range is set to minus five. Then you have the full range of. Uh, the MIDI volume <coughs> control from 0 to 127 and 0 is well here and 127 would be here the max that would be uh, when you have set your master output of your profiler maybe to I don't know minus 6 mm -hmm. then uh, max MIDI volume would reach this this point everything above be um, careful you would uh, uh, go into plus level so you would override your uh, master output mm. because in this area it works as a boost and um, another pitfall is um, if you have volume pedal locked you assume that it's locked for all your rigs mm. which is true for all your rigs in the browse mode in the browser mm. not not for the rigs in your performances okay. because uh, don't end up with uh, you know preparing all this and uh, uh, it works nicely with uh, your selected rigs in the browse mode and then you um, you move them over to the performances or you work on your performances and then you haven't checked that one in the performance mode, uh, you will get some erratic uh, behavior of uh, the volumes according to the settings of uh, <coughs> this range parameter. I thought that's uh, an important thing to mention. Yeah. Um, I can show 
the stuff. Right. So I was that everybody uh, just can can hear how it uh, how it works. Yes. Uh, everything controlled by um, by logic. I need to show you the volume swells, which, which uh, are very nice. Uh, here we are. <clears throat> so logic here, MIDI volume, and you can see that. So every time starting at the beginning of a bar <clears throat> volume fades in and then going back next one next one two bars then next one and then for the uh, b section we have 127 uh, a little bit louder than the other stuff so um, i will show you the rig manager so that you can see how it changes so uh just check out the crystal delay it switches off after uh 16 bars or eight bars eight bars is it and uh here is the morphing stuff so i hope it works Yes, it worked. <laughs> awesome. Okay, you could see see the changes of uh, simple morphing. So, um, uh, coming back to the question that you asked, um, what has changed uh, to uh, years ago, where I was doing this stuff? So years ago, I had a little needed to uh, spend a little bit more time in logic to get all that stuff to uh, set it right that uh, the profiler was communicating with everything and then setting the right um, midi control changes there were some some little switches and i did that i think it was yesterday yeah yesterday i did just created this this uh, simple track and yeah turned this midi track on set it to profiler midi channel one midi channel one and it worked so yeah sometimes <laughs> uh, you have luck <laughs> yeah especially just just only uh the thing with the ui to midi where where it uh gets this overload that tilt button but um yeah when you know that it's fine yeah that's true and um, yeah, same with me. I just, uh, um, you know, this is down now because uh, um, I set at the beginning of the track the, the volumes all down yeah. as well. Um, uh, um, I was totally unprepared because I haven't done with anything with that stuff uh, with these backing tracks for a while. And uh, this was easy. Once I got the information how to set up this external midi routing which was required for me otherwise uh, it it wouldn't have worked then everything was pretty um, simple and straightforward so um, here's what i came up with and as i said uh, bear with me i'm a little bit uh, unprepared um, overworked and unrehearsed uh, but uh, that should be no problem now so if you can see um, yes. ho hopefully both. I yes, just yes, uh, keep keep this open. So and I just uh, hit play, and it will take a while. But uh, maybe we use it that uh, yeah, I I play you out, so to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
really like is that you and and I will do that too. <laughs> it's it's better than my version um, to have these uh, different tracks. Um, it's more visible to see what you're doing and um, to have this uh, MIDI track, just MIDI track, morph up, morph down, delay on, delay off. So you can just copy and paste and switch it. It's it's when when you have done it once um, for those main uh, things, parameter changes, it's easy to copy and place it at, at that time. So you don't need to like meet it, uh, paint everything <laughs> every time. So it's, it's a big time saver to, to use these uh, little snippets, little tracks and, and copy and paste them. Yeah, very, that's, very good. Yeah, that's what I thought because, um, because I use it, I don't do this regularly, you know, I'm yeah. this, um, me too also uh, guitarist you know I don't do stuff for two weeks uh, and then I, I get into it as well of course if I prepare for um, you know doing something live or so I would rehearse properly of course <clears throat> but then you forget tiny little stuff like that and uh, I thought uh, this would be uh, easy to revisit and also I realized that um, if you have a number of backing tracks for example if you have one um, project like this and you have your stuff that you're usually doing because I think everybody has stuff uh, what you're usually doing you're raising and bringing in delay levels mm -hmm. uh, yeah. there's reverb then you have <coughs> bone dry stuff it's about distortion and leveling and then there's you know this overall thing uh, the morphing possible and switching tones of course and then you have i don't know five six seven tracks of your uh, controls there mm. and if you keep that if you save that and uh just bring in another track on top you know another backing track uh, you mm -hmm. just need to adjust uh, the tempo yes. and then you can move the things around because you have your parameters already there so uh, it's much more um you know uh, it's it's a little bit uh, it's more transparent when you yes. revisit that and you yes. don't see just one track with with all the yeah. stuff that's what i thought and yeah. uh, definitely definitely better than my one <laughs> well, <laughs> all these things are not about better or worse no. it's just what works for you and yeah. um, then it's also the thing um i don't know how are you guys doing um i hear a lot of people switch from logic to live ableton live for doing live stuff and uh, with live, of course, mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, that might work in a different way because I haven't checked out live in terms of mm -hmm. uh, controller um, handling yet. But uh, uh, as I said, a lot of people really, really love that because the looping situation is a completely different one. Um, and yeah, that might be something um, we can look into as well i say here uh, being not aware about what i'm promising because then i would have to get into life again <laughs> but yeah let's see and um yeah it would be great let us hear um what you're doing because on the big level i mean i went to see um, the adele stage setup and the rumpstein guys and uh the muse and you name them uh who are running you know the shows with the uh, central clocks and uh the light and whatever some fire and stuff like that is all controlled via time code and dmx i think is uh, the uh, the language for lights and explosions <laughs> <laughs> and uh of course where you know there's trained personnel taking care of that but now uh, it's so easy and possible to do this uh, on your own as well because now with uh, the iPad Pros and the USB-C connection mm -hmm. uh, you can also uh, run your profiler for, or your show from your iPad and uh, do it in small places, small clubs if you have a singer-songwriter act to people you can do pretty amazing stuff if you use this and uh, be happy uh creative and successful out there yep. 
and and uh, many people nowadays using backing tracks just some simple backing tracks so now if you're using a backing track it's set when the chorus comes when uh, the the different song sections are coming so um, why not setting these switchings you have the you can just concentrate on playing guitar and this is um, much easy just uh, for that simple track uh, I played now it's easy don't don't think about using the volume swells and everything so uh, just play and and you're done it's it's fine and it's not that hard to um, program that stuff and it's easy to rearrange it so if some sections are coming uh, twice no problem <clears throat> right just copy the situation there yeah. and uh yeah now with the usb connector it's as i said it's so so easy to yeah. handle because you don't have to bring an audio interface you don't have to have these additional cables and yada 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 the profiler goes into your mixer or pa and then you're set yeah. You, you have your computer device or with the new iPhones. Um, I mean, it's also possible with the old iPads and the old iPhones, but then you need an adapter. But with new iPhones, with a USB connector, uh, mm. I mean, you can run your show from your iPhone and be on top of things. <coughs> yeah, being on top of things. Um, I think... Um, Thanks so much for watching and bearing with us. Uh, thanks a lot to Thomas for um, preparing all this, uh, showing his stuff, because basically you were the inspiration uh, to begin with for me to look into this again, because oh. I, I had this 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 track you used uh, a couple of years ago from the Guitar Summit, and uh, I was always forgetting <laughs> how to do that, how to create, <laughs> recreate that. And so it's great that uh, we can show now um, a simple way for yeah. everybody so thank you again thanks for being uh with us today and uh, try this at home people uh so um if you i don't know i could share the logic project also yeah, if you want no to no problem um, yeah and the backing track um yeah whatever and the rig as i said it's uh, my covenant dynamo it's up on uh the rig exchange yeah i can i can uh, we can load it up no problem. All right. So see you next time. Thank you, Thomas. Goodbye. Bye.